Hi, it's me again, George here. Hope you're doing well. Anyways, what we're gonna do in this video is circuit this PBA 40 ventilator that I've got behind me. Now, it's pretty much the exact same process to circuit this ventilator as it is any other ventilator. But there's a couple of different things with this one. First thing is, there's an inspiratory filter on the ventilator. That's this filter right over here. It's got an arrow, don't know how well you can see it, but there's an arrow right here indicating the direction of gas flow. Plus these adapters, or these connections on the filter are slightly different in diameter. Anyways, the gas travels through the filter in this direction, as indicated by the arrow. So that means gas goes to the patient that way. So this end attaches to the ventilator, this end attaches to that little tubing that goes to the humidifier. Now on the ventilator, it goes onto the ventilator right over here. So make sure the ventilator's wheels are locked and attach that filter to the ventilator. Make sure it's in there nice and snug. Now the next thing that's a little bit different with this ventilator is it's got this circuit attachment at the exhalation end. This isn't the exhalation manifold, but it's part of getting the gas from the patient into the ventilator. So you need these two components. It consists of a filter right over here to filter the gas, as well as a collection bottle right over here to collect any kind of rain out that might assemble or collect inside the, the circuit itself. Now, you're probably going to get this potentially put together already for you, and it's just simply attaching it into the, to the ventilator, but they might be apart, or you might have to take it apart. So, how do you take it apart? Simply hold on to it and then slide this locking ring. The locking ring is this white thing right over here. There's a couple of tabs on it. Just simply slide it over to the left, like so. Eh. Had it on too tight to the left like this, and then the two pieces come apart. Okay. So if you get this in the clean utility, and uh, you have to put it together, the easiest way of putting it together is take this white tab, make sure it's all the way in this direction to the, well, I guess it's the right in your orientation, to the right. Make sure the port for the circuit and the port for the drainage on the collection ball are lined up like this. They'll go together and then just slide this over to the left, connects it all up. And that's how you place that together. Again, I'll do it again. So slide this all the way over to the right, like that. Pop them apart. Make sure this is all to the right, all the way to the right before you attach the two. Make sure this port right over here lines up with the port where the circuit attaches. When you've done that, just simply push that locking ring to the left, locks it all in place. Now you can attach it to the ventilator. Where does it go on the ventilator? It goes right over here. So make sure those ports are facing forward. Get down to take a look. Slide the, this, the uh, filter and collection unit in. And there's this locking tab right over here. Push that down to lock that in place to minimize leaks. Now once you've got that on, the inspiratory filter here, the expiratory filter over there, now you can start building your circuit. So the first thing you want to do is take your water bag and put your water bag and humidifying pot on the ventilator. So I've already got it attached. There's the pot, there's the water bag, it's all attached. What I'm going to do first of all is simply slide that onto the humidifier's hot plate like so. And then I'm going to take the bag and hang it up here. Can't really see it right now. But the bag's just simply hung up in the right spot. Right there. So the bag's going to allow the water to drain into the humidifier. Now what I can do now is start assembling the circuit. So I'm going to take the short blue tubing. It goes from that inspiratory filter right over there to the humidifier. It doesn't matter which port I choose. Okay, so if you don't like that port, just simply put it on that port right over there. Grab the circuit that's pretty much assembled. Inspiratory limb is in blue, expiratory limb is in white. And now you can attach your circuit to the humidifier. So I'm going to put the inspiratory limb right over here like that. Make sure that's nice and secure. I'm going to drape the circuit onto the support arm that the ventilator gives me, like so. Again, watch the connections of the circuit so nothing gets contaminated. And then I'm going to take this expiratory portion and stick it right onto that 
filters exhalation port or expiratory port right over there. So the circuit pretty much now is on the ventilator. I'm just taking a look to make sure you guys can see what I'm looking at. All right, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. There. So the circuit's hanging on here pretty clean. I can trace the gas flow into the humidifier. Now I can trace it to the patient capped over here and trace the flow back to the, the ventilator. So it's all put on there properly. Now I look, what I have to do now is put on my wires that make that humidifier work with the ventilator and the humidification system that I have. Okay? So I'm going to grab the temperature sensors first. Again, remember, two ends, patient end, humidifier end. So I'm going to attach the humidifier end first. So pop that tab off the port on the circuit by the humidifier. Keep control of your ends here and simply line it up, that, that probe, and attach it so it goes in place. Take the end that goes by the patient, find the port by the patient Y, uncap it, and safely and cleanly connect that temperature sensor probe in there. Good idea to check the MDI port now as so well, make sure that's on there nice and secure. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to let our wire hang like this, but we're going to clip it to the circuit. So simply find the clips that came with the circuit and now clip it in place. Make it look nice and neat. Here's the double clip right over here. I'm going to use it in this fashion to clip both parts of the circuit together with the heated wire in between them. And then the last little bit of this sensor wire, I'm going to clip it to the circuit right over there. So it looks kind of, well, it looks pretty neat as pretty neat. Now we're not done yet. We've got to take those uh, energizing cords and hook that up as well. So remember, the one with the three triangular configuration, three prong triangular configuration, that's for the inspiratory side. That one right over there, it's got those two prongs. That's for the expiratory side. So I'm going to line this up like so. So I'm going to turn that a bit so I can see properly. Line it up. I'm going to take the expiratory one now, feed it behind the humidifier, and hook it up to the expiratory limb, make sure it's lined up, and away it goes. As long as you've got it lined up properly, nothing's going to happen. Now the last thing I have to do, I'm going to zoom in for this. Hey, I finally figured out how that zoom works. I'm going to turn the ventilator slightly. Unlock the wheels, turn it a bit so you can see because this humidifier is fixed to the ventilator. And now I'm going to lock the wheels back. So let's move. And remember, there's two indicator arrows here on the humidifier with each color-coded plug-in on the humidifier. What I need to do is take the appropriate color-coded cord, so yellow one right over here. I need to find the identifier. That's this little yellow tab. That lines up with the little indicator on the humidifier. Once they're lined up properly, slide it in. Now, you have to make sure when you're lining that up that you do put it in correctly, because if you don't, you'll damage the humidifier or you damage the cord, and then the humidifier is not going to function, which essentially makes the humidification system on this ventilator not work. So if you don't have a functioning humidifier, the ventilator doesn't work as well in terms of humidification for the patient, so you'll have to use something like an HME, some sort of external filter that's going to provide that heat and moisture exchange that you want to occur. Now, I have to take the blue one right over here. This is for the temperature sensors because the humidifier has to work with those temperature sensors. And again, make sure that I've got the little indicator here on the plug-in lined up with the little indicator on the humidifier itself, and it should slide in just like that. So once I've got that in, there. Circuit's all attached. Take one last look at it. Lock the wheels. I'm going to zoom out. Let's look at the circuit. Take it off the support arm. Yeah, the flow of the circuit looks really good. Comes from the vent into the humidifier, from the humidifier all the way to the patient. Patient ends capped. MDI port is closed and on top. Temperature sensors on top. Circuit goes back to the ventilator. All these connections here are nice and tight. Now this ventilator 
with the circuit can be turned on <coughs> and you can do a pre-use check on the ventilator to make sure that it is in fact functioning. Now when you do the pre-use check on the ventilator, make sure you've got your power plugged in. So you'd have to attach the gas for air and oxygen to the appropriate station outlets. You might have quick connects or DIS connections where you are. And then you have to make sure that the ventilator is plugged in and the humidifier is plugged in as well. Our humidifiers are plugged into the ventilators in the front here, so we only need to plug in the ventilator cord to get power to the humidifier as well. And then we do our pre-use check, make sure it passes, and turn the ventilator humidifier system on. Now one thing about this ventilator, the PB840, that's really important to remember, and always remember this, is when you do a pre-use check, or you, sorry, when you turn the ventilator on, always have the cap on the patient Y off. And the reason you do that is, if this is capped, the ventilator thinks there's a patient attached, and as a safety, it automatically starts to try to ventilate the patient. So before you turn the ventilator on, specifically to the PB840, remove the cap, then go and turn the ventilator on, and then you can access your pre-use check menu and do the pre-use check on the ventilator. It's called an SST. Anyways, that's pretty well how you circuit a PB840 when you're getting ready to use the ventilator on a patient. Make sure you do the pre-use check. Make sure the ventilator is clean before you circuit it. Gloves on, of course. Make sure that it's nice and clean for your patient. Don't let any of the circuit touch you anywhere. Your head, your hair, the floor, the countertop. Assemble the circuit in a nice clean area. Get it on the ventilator. Make sure it looks neat and clean. You're good to go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, thumbs up, give me a like. If you didn't like it, thumbs down, suggestions how to improve it. And if you get a chance, please subscribe to the channel. And have yourself one heck of a great day. George out.